What is art and how does it affect our lives, especially during our early childhood development? Well, experts in the field of art education point out that art activities are essential for our development. In other words, art is good brain food. Art engages children's senses in open-ended play and develops cognitive, social-emotional and multi-sensory skills. As children progress into elementary school and beyond, art continues to provide opportunities for brain development, mastery, self-esteem and creativity. The Redlands Art Association strongly supports this and continues to grant funding through its Margaret Clark Art Education Endowment Fund to programs such as these. This is Diana Lawson, Program Coordinator of MICA House on Chapel Street in Redlands. Diana, your program is one of the community projects that we fund. Tell us how it came about. During the summertime is when our MICA House kids do not have homework anymore. So we're always looking for something to fill the time with them and a productive activity. And when we heard about the Art Association's grant, we knew that was something that would be perfect for our kids to do over the summertime. And so we were very excited and felt rather blessed that we were honored with the grant for the summer. Our program is basically, um, we're set up for what we define as at-risk underserved kids. And these are the kids that live on the north side of Redlands. They usually are home alone in the afternoon. But having the arts as a part of our program is very important because these are the types of activities that are being cut in the school um, systems right now with not only the teachers, but they're also cutting programs. And this caliber of art that we're able to um, have taught to our kids through the grants that the association gives us is way above what we would normally do on a normal basis here at our programs. These two beautiful women are the originators of this program and um, we're surrounded by this beautiful artwork. I can't believe that they're done by? Children <laughs> of the Boys and Girls Club of Redlands. Yeah. Yes. Tell us, tell us about this particular project. Well, this particular project um, explores um, fruits and vegetables from all over the world and it incorporates chalk pastels on colored supports and um, we like to introduce different kinds of fruits and vegetables that children normally would not be um, exposed to. So they have wonderful shapes and um, it is an organic study. And we work with textures and lights and darks and layering and um, textures that have um, you know, seed quality and um, fibers like the coconut and um, Different, different methods that they can use in their line quality. <laughs> we asked them to pretend and think about if maybe they were a tiny little bug on a big piece of fruit, what it would look like. So if you look around, nothing's drawn actual size. We asked them to really blow it up and that helps them look more for the, um, the textures and the fibers and all the different things to really explore the fruit rather than when they have it at home, they just pop it in their mouth and don't really think about it. So they became not just fruits and vegetables, but really interesting objects. Well, I love the fact that you use not only the ordinary, everyday vegetables that we may eat, but some of the exotic ones, and the children seem to respond to it very well. 
From the second they walked into the room, they were just ecstatic. I wanted to pick everything up. What is this? What's going on? You know, what? what's this? I've never seen that. Oh, this is that. Mm -hmm. They were wanting to taste it at the very end. Um, it was the first time several of them had had a passion fruit or a papaya. And so um, it was just a wonderful experience to have, you know, all of the senses engaged in this art project. You know, I, working with the kids, you know, because of the Margaret Clark uh, Art Education Fund, you know, it gives us access to many different things. It gives the kids the opportunity to be able to think outside the box. And, you know, some of these kids that come to the club, you know, unfortunately, art is not something that they're used to doing. You know, they're used to playing sports, you know, and there's so many cutbacks in school. You know, they're doing away with arts. They're doing away with some sports. They're doing away with transportation. And the Boys and Girls Club and the Redlands Art Association, with their support, it gives us another opportunity to be able to offer this program to the kids. We're chatting with P.T. McEwen, who is the CEO of the Boys and Girls Club in the Redlands. P.T., tell us what happens to the artwork once the children have finished their projects and it's the end of the year. What we do is we put together a art exhibit at the end of the year. It's usually a week-long event. The art is for sale, somewhere between $50 to $150. And it's for the, uh, the money from there goes back into the art program. Um, to match uh, what the Margaret Clark Fund has given, uh, plus other grants uh, that we received for the art program. We're talking today with Mrs. Carolyn Cosound, principal of Smiley Elementary School. I'm absolutely delighted to see this beautiful paintings, uh, the drawings, the artwork. Thank Tell you. us how the Art Attack program and the Redlands Art Association has influenced your art education programs here. We started five years ago with a grant from the Redlands Art Association that was um, secured by our PTA president at the time, Louise Hewitt. Since that time, the program has grown every year successfully with more and more art being displayed and more and more awards and supplies being purchased. Every child in our school has a piece of art represented here tonight at the art show they can share with their parents and family. We have second grade up here, third grade here, fifth grade over here. Every child has something to show and they also have an opportunity to appreciate the art projects from their student peers. A program like this in these economic times cannot survive or not even exist without the private funding of organizations like the Redlands Art Association. I want to thank them for giving our students an opportunity to shine with their beautiful art projects. This is Suzanne Bird, who is the coordinator of the Arts Attack program here at Smiley Elementary School. Suzanne, tell us how you got involved in this. Well, I'm a parent here at uh, Smiley Elementary School and I coordinate the Arts Attack program because I love the arts. I, I studied art history in school. I have a degree in art history and a degree in education. However, um, you don't have to have any kind of experience to be an art docent or a volunteer here at Smiley. So um, I decided, well, I really want to be involved. And so the Arts Attack program seemed like the perfect thing. So I jumped right in after Louise Hewitt and Julie Jackson um, were the arts coordinators. And then I've now been doing it two years and I'm excited to continue. Um, we are so grateful for getting the grant money that we do from the Redlands Art Association. Um, and we will continue to keep doing the art and um, encourage all parents to volunteer and be involved in our school art program. It's a great program. I can't speak highly enough about it. We're chatting with Sue Young, who is the Art Program Director at Orangewood High School. Sue, tell us about this program and this show. The kids at Orangewood 
are extremely creative. They put their hearts, souls, and passions into their work. They come many times with very low self-esteem. They don't think they're good. And over the period of time they stay in class, the other students encourage them as much as I do. And you can see them blossom. And here we have Alejandro Escoreno. Did I say it correctly? Yes. You're standing behind a piece that won the first prize in creative ceramics. Very interesting. Tell us about it. Uh, everybody else was doing straight house, like they're just sticking up straight. I just want to make it look a little bit different, make it stand out. Marvelous. I love it. How did you feel about receiving the awards? Pretty excited, proud of myself. Without the Redlands Art Association to provide money for a scholarship every year, we would not have what we do today to be able to provide for them to go on and continue their art. We're talking with Tracy Massimiano, who is the chairman of the art department at Redlands East Valley High School. Tracy, this is a fantastic show. It seems so large and representative of a lot of different media. What say you? Oh, this is really great. It is the largest show I think we've ever had in here for the end of the year show. How many entries did you have? Um, there's close to 200 pieces of art on display here right now. It was really wonderful to see the parents with the students milling around, looking at their work. And more importantly, it was great to see them receive their awards. They seemed so delighted. How did the kids really feel about receiving these? You know, they really enjoy it. I mean, I think they liked just being recognized just as much. But when there's, you know, that special monetary award, it really you know, makes it, you know, worthwhile. It, it really pushes them forward and makes them want to do more art. This is Kelly Tilson. She's in charge of the digital arts program here at Rev High School. Kelly, this is high-tech stuff. Tell us some more. Well, from 24 years of experience in the outside corporate world, I want to bring that into the classroom and really give a foundation to the students so that they have an exposure to the graphic design and advertising world so that before they leave high school they could decide if this is something that they were interested in. Um, by the time we're done with the year, uh, there's quite a few of them that have actually picked up jobs freelancing in the community, doing a logo or a business card for uh, you know, business owners in, in Redlands and around the area. So it is a stepping stone to a career for a lot of students. Let me introduce you to Rosemary Rendell Baker, who is a longtime supporter of the arts and specifically the Redlands Art Association and the Margaret Clark Art Education Endowment Fund. Rosemary, how did you get started with our organization? Well, I just happened to walk into the art gallery, the, the first art gallery, and Margaret Clark was sitting there. 
and she spoke to me and I, she said, uh, would you like to join? And I said, well, I'm no artist, but I, I just admire what I see. And so she said, well, there are other jobs you can perhaps do. And I ended up uh, sending out the newsletter. And that's how it started. And then at that time also, I took my turn of sitting in the gallery once a month. And from then on, I just enjoyed. The, generally, the atmosphere of the art association, the artists themselves, and our get-togethers. We had nice get-togethers and nice tours, nice um, classes on Saturday morning, which I used to go to. And nobody said, that's awful, <laughs> that we've done. It was always encouraging. I got, I've got a lot out of my association. And with, how long has that association been, Rosemary? Oh, as I say, I, I really think about 30 years I've been doing, I did it. It's right. only since my husband became ill and I couldn't uh, attend that I gave up. But I, I feel very comfortable going into the art association because I still feel it's my home. These programs could not be possible without the support of donors like Rosemary Randall Baker and you, our audience. Please continue to provide good brain food for our children. And remember, art is cool.